Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iPhone 11 has been out for a little bit over a year. And so I wanted to share my overall experience with it, talk about its durability, battery health, battery life, and if you should still pick one up now that it's 2020 and we're getting close to the launch of the iPhone 12. And so the first thing is its durability. Now the iPhone 11 has been pretty well managed and maintained, meaning I use a case with it most of the time. Now it's a little bit backward from what I do with most phones as I want to do something a little bit different. So I use the Apple Silicon case or silicone case, and this was actually working really well. You'll see it's held up pretty well. The case doesn't really have any issues, but the phone has been kept perfect because of it. Even though it has a bottom that's open, it's actually held up really, really well. So no issues there. The frame is in great shape. And for most people, unless you drop your phone a lot, the frame is going to hold up just fine. It's aluminum on the iPhone 11, and it seems to be pretty durable overall. I have no scratches on the camera lenses, which is really good. Of course, that would be really bad if you had scratches, but it seems to hold up well, even just setting it down on a table like this, no issues there. However, the display will scratch very easily. In fact, I showed that in my iPhone 11 Pro Max video. So as you can see, my 11 Pro Max has a bunch of scratches right here. And to make for more durable glass when dropping it, Apple changed the formulation or really Corning did with Gorilla Glass. They changed the formulation of the glass to make it more durable when being dropped. However, it's more prone to scratching. And so the iPhone 11 was one of the phones I actually just put a screen protector on right away to prevent any of those issues. And so the screen protector is preventing scratches. And even before I put the screen protector on, there are some very light scratches on here. And I think that's just because well, it's the way this glass is. It's durable when being dropped and it's not durable when hitting different objects. Now, this is the number one phone I see most people carrying, not necessarily this green color, but rather just iPhone 11 in general. If they upgraded to a phone, I know a lot of people are going to complain about the display resolution being between 720p and 1080p, but the majority of people just don't care unless you're into tech specs and have to have the best. In fact, with this display, you can't see the pixels. It's it's above 300 pixels per inch and that's above retina. So as long as you're holding it about a foot and a half away, you can't see the pixels at all. Even if you bring it up close, you can't see the pixels. And so when you're watching YouTube, you can still watch in 1080p. And so here is my video from the other day with the Apple event update. And as you can see, you have the option for 1080p. Now you won't have 4k and it seems like YouTube has removed that ability anyway, but basically this display is closer to 1080p and it will just scale it. So you'll be able to see all of that quality with the bit rate of 1080p scaled to this display. So most people aren't bothered by that. Also, you get one advantage with this display is the lack of PWM or pulse width modulation, the way this display actually controls the brightness. This is an LCD display and liquid retina as Apple calls it, but that's really because of these corners here. But this particular display doesn't flash to control brightness. It's always on and it's not blinking constantly. And while you can't see that on an iPhone 11 pro max with an OLED display, it's just not present at all on the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 10 R, which has a similar display. So it's nice and bright. It goes really bright. It won't bother your eyes. So if you suffer from headaches or light sensitivity, the iPhone 11 won't bother your eyes. And so I recommend it to a lot of people that have those issues. In fact, one in 10 are bothered by the PWM or the, the flickering display. There's many monitors that are made that have anti flicker displays for this reason. And so this particular display doesn't have that. And it's best for people with sensitivity to light or flickering displays. So it's really great for that. It goes nice and bright. Like I said, and I think it's the best LCD display out there next to maybe the pro display XDR monitor that Apple has. Now, as far as the speakers, well, the speakers are quite good as well. Let me go back to my video here and I'll turn it up and let me move my microphone so you can hear them after a year. They've held up. Well, it's an object view. Now you can't see it because I'd have to hold my phone vertically, but if you tap on this, you'll see this sort of circles around with the date in the 
And so the overall quality of the speakers is great. You've still got that stereo quality sound and I haven't had any issues with the speakers distorting or anything like that. They will distort a little bit at high volumes, but that's true of just about any speaker. Just back it off a little bit and you'll be fine, but they haven't degraded over a year. I've carried this with me along with the 11 pro max, just about everywhere I go as it's brought with me for video reviews and things like that. And it seems to be holding up well. And as far as the CPU and processor and the way it holds up when using iOS 14, there's been no issues. In fact, I would say it's maybe even a little bit faster with iOS 14 as far as its smoothness and scrolling through things, going through different menus, and it just seems to be nice and fast. So you're not really going to have any issues there. One area where you may have a few issues has to do with the battery and iOS 14 has been a little bit buggy with the battery. In fact, Apple acknowledged this and said to complete wipe the phone and restore from a backup if you're having major issues. And so that's not the greatest fix. Hopefully we'll see a software update to fix that later on. And this is a phone where I use it a lot just to play around with different ideas on the home screen. When I was coming up with my, how to customize your display video, I use this phone to play around with that to make sure I understood how it worked properly before I taught you how to do the same thing. And so this phone is not heavily used, but it seems to be holding up well. So you'll see that after a year, my battery health is going to be a hundred percent because it's not my main phone. But if I switch over to the phone that I do use full time, let me show you the battery health there. So on my iPhone 11 pro max, that's used every single day, I have 94% battery health after a year that's charging it every night overnight and leaving it on a wireless charger. And I don't use a case on it, so it doesn't have any heat issues and it seems to hold up. Well, Apple says 80% after two years is normal. So if you have 90% or better, you're doing really well. So I would expect the same capacity out of this. And of course, as it degrades over time, this is true of any battery. So if you have an Android phone or an older iPhone, even if it's not showing you this, it's still degrading over time. And after a while, you'll eventually need to replace the battery a few years is pretty normal before having to swap the battery, but a lot of people upgrade their phone at that point. But battery life in general will get you through nine hours, usually no problem. In fact, using it regularly, you should get through the day without a problem. Of course, you could fast charge it if you have a fast charger, but they never included that in the box for some reason. And it looks like they're not going to include it with iPhone 12, but in general, it seems to be holding up really well. In fact, I have no complaints and this is the phone I recommend to most people that aren't tech enthusiasts. It seems to be the phone that's reliable. It's not as expensive. You save a bunch of money and you get great cameras. In fact, my iPhone 11 pro max video was recorded on an 11 pro and the quality of the camera is top notch, especially for video. You've got 4k 60 video. If you want it, Let's see if we, well, we've got 4k 30 selected now, but you have 4k 60 if you want it in the settings. So if you go over to your settings here, and then we go over and down to camera, wherever that is, I can never find it. I wish they'd just make all the settings in the app, but you do have the option for 4k 60 if you want it. So you can switch over to that, have that for slow-mo. And then you've got the advantage of the newer processor in this as well, doing all of the computational photography and videos. And this is a phenomenal phone for video, the same camera that's in here. And the sensors are basically the same in the 11 pro and the 11 pro max. So you're not really missing out. You're just missing an additional telephoto lens. And so you've got a great camera system here and I can highly recommend this for someone that wants to use it just for recording video or even maybe vlogging here. So it seems to be great with that. As you can see here, there's no problems. The, the quality is great. Again, we've got 4k options on the front facing camera and it looks great. You can use it for FaceTime, for web calls, whatever you want. And it really holds up well to that. So I have no complaints about this whatsoever, but the real question is, this year, if you don't already have an iPhone 11, or maybe you do, should you upgrade to an iPhone 12? Because that's going to introduce a new design and maybe a new display. Now there's a couple reasons to say, yes, you should upgrade and a couple to say you shouldn't. This is a prototype non-functional iPhone 12 unit that gives you an idea of the squared off edges and what it should look like. The camera bump may look a little bit different, but the 11 is supposed to have a similar size display, but have a squared off look. So you're going to gain a more squared off look. 
I don't know that you'll have three cameras, but you'll gain a squared off look and possibly an OLED display. It looks like Apple's going to get rid of the LCD display. And again, like I mentioned earlier, if PWM bothers your eyes, well, you'll want to wait and just keep your iPhone 11 and not upgrade because that will probably bother your eyes unless Apple introduces some new technology where that's not an issue. Now, the other thing too, maybe you'll get some better battery life with the iPhone 12 when it releases and you will get a faster CPU, but that's really not an issue on the iPhone 11. You're not going to have any of those slowdowns. It's just fast all the time. Like I said, so no issues there. It has great cameras. And if you're looking for an iPhone 12, well, certainly you could swap it if you're on the yearly plans or anything like that. But if you're sensitive to light and things, you may want to keep your iPhone 11 and this phone is a tank. It should last for years as long as you're not very careless with it and dropping it into water constantly or mud or onto concrete or anything like that. If you take good care of your phones, expect it to last for years. So yes, I still recommend it. Even once the iPhone 12 comes out, it will be for specific people. The camera's great. Most people aren't going to have an issue with that whatsoever. And just in general, it's a great phone and I highly recommend it to many people still, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you have an iPhone 11? Do you have a different phone or are you going to be upgrading to this or maybe the iPhone 12? Also, I would expect when the iPhone 12 comes out for the price to lower on the iPhone 11, and maybe they'll keep that around and get rid of the iPhone 10 R. So it seems like if they do what they've done every year, once the iPhone 12 comes out, the iPhone 11 will lower in price by one or $200 and you'll get a little bit of a discount or maybe even get a discount through your carrier to buy one, get one free. Oftentimes you'll see deals like that with older phones. So you may want to get one of those if you're looking for it. Otherwise, if you have one, hang on to it. If not, let me know what you're planning to upgrade to next. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.